All right, now we are live. I am Gary from Volutone, and this is the weekly webinar series. Uh, you guys just heard, uh, you know, a great half an hour discussion kind of on the back end about with Matt, Matt Deaver, talking about the uh, his experience and, uh, you know, what, what he is seeing as far as the business, uh, uh, what he's developed uh, with episode. Uh, we're really excited to, to, to go down this audio uh, 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 pathway, if you will, with our, with our training today. So, um, yeah, real quick. The normal stuff. Uh, we're going to dive in deep into an hour. Uh, definitely uh, need your questions here. Let's let's get some uh, examples. Uh, we've got experts here to answer the questions. Uh, the presentation will go through a complete hour. I think you're going to hand it off, and we're going to do a little bit of the uh, the loudspeakers, uh, the the 5.1, obviously the AVR. Um, and so it's kind of be a kind of a split session today. But regardless, I'm recording the whole thing. And of, of course, anybody who registered for this training today, which was well over 200 today, um, is going to get a copy of not only the presentation, but the recording. Uh, I'm going to throw together links. Uh, I'm going to continue this conversation with you all. And that'll be on your inbox on Friday morning. But uh, from all of us at the Snap AV local level, uh, we're, we're certainly so happy uh, that, that we're being able to put these things on every single week. The, the uh, participation has been fantastic and we have the best of the best guests on. So uh, we're gonna continue this. We're gonna dive right into it. Matt, it is good to meet you. Good to work with you again. Um, I think we can go as deep as we wanna go today. Uh, you know, I think that we, we, you're gonna have is a, an audience that's uh, gonna be well receiving your product. Um, let's talk, let's get into it. Uh, feel free to ask the questions as we go. We'll pause periodically and get those answered for you. But uh, from all of us at the Snap AV Locals, uh, welcome to the show, Alex and uh, Matt. Take it away, guys. Thanks, Gary. First off, thanks everybody for uh, taking the time to join us today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Uh, I'm Matt Deaver, I'm product manager for speakers for our all of Snap AV. Uh, joined by Alex here. Uh, we are both based out of uh, Portland, Oregon at the Triad facility. Um, so, you, hey, if you're ever up in Portland, uh, give, us a, give us a ping, uh, come on by, we'll give you a cook's tour of the Triad facility and uh, meet and greet type of thing. Today, our focus is on episode introductions. And over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've had two keys in uh, the episode line being launched and that's the episode core architectural series and the episode mini 5.1 i'm going to take the speaker side because that's my forte and then alex is going to take the uh, uh avr as he is focused on mr audio product uh, development on that particular side so getting right into it the new lineup of episode core as we call it uh is replacing the 150 350 550 series of speakers there's a total of 23 new models uh, and they're crossed over between three performance levels similar to the 150, 350, and 550. It's an extensive line that you've become familiar with from episode um, with some new additions and technologies being applied to these. Um, like I said, three series of models to meet uh, all of our partners' needs. And instead of a 150, 350, 550, we call it the one series, two series, and three series. Uh, and you'll see some model numbering coming up that helps guide you in regards to series as well as driver size incorporated. Real key in this is that all of the current episode accessories, the new construction brackets, the square, the round grills, the white and black versions of the grills, all match exactly what the new series one series two series and three series uh, are so same cutout sizes uh so backward compatible forward compatible on both directions and keeping with the uh, episode speakers the lifetime limited warranty on these quick eye chart and i'll come back to this at the very end with a transition to show you side by side uh, the complete lineup in the three in the one series, uh, three series, and five series, as you see, progressively get a few more. Of that real sweet spot being the three series price point and also feature content. The red asterisks are just highlighting new models that were not available in the previous 150, 350, and 550 series. MSRPs are being shown, and then uh, key and near to near everybody's heart is. Are these prices up or are they down? And MSRP reductions across the board, that was one of our goals with this was to um, 
the 150, 350, and 550 date back to, wow, it's now 10 years in the marketplace uh, and have done a tremendous job. But in that time period, competition has gotten sharper. Uh, so we had to come out with a uh, better performing, you know, the, the old adage of uh, run faster, jump higher, cost less uh, was, was our primary targets. And as you can see, the MSRP reductions and appropriately dealer cost reductions, uh, maintaining your margin at that 65 point average. One of the questions, why choose the episode core line? And we'll go through each of these, but sound based on science, a comprehensive lineup, solutions for every install, high value performance balance, because uh, yes, I, I mean, you can create a $10,000 speaker uh, and you can also create a $100 speaker. And, making that balance between to be able to get those right price points and the performance to support that is very, very critical. And then touch on the expanded offerings with uh, some additional all weather speakers and a new technology that we're adding is called DVCS, dual voice coil surround hybrid, which combines two technologies into one speaker, uh, maximizing your inventories. So we'll kick it off with sound based on science and, uh, Creating good sound is, it is a science. It, it's not an art. And a lot of people believe it's an art, but um, we base our sound for episode on the uh, research that was developed out of the Canadian National Research Council, the NRC. Uh, Dr. Floyd Toole, if you're into the audio side, you know he is one of the uh, great loudspeaker oh, designers, philosophers that have been in our generation. Um, and what his team discovered was that, again, was not an art, but a science to what makes a good sounding speaker. And so we've based our tunings and design creation into that particular side. What, what his team found was really three key takeaways that make a great speaker. And one is wide dispersion. So again, lots of coverage over a wide area in a particular room. Flat frequency response. Uh, not to add color to the speaker. You really are, our, our goals are to bring it, bring that sound exactly what the artist intended and then low distortion to keep it as clean as possible. We'll go through each one on, on the uh, comprehensive lineup, solutions you need. And again, the new core line is full line, uh, deep catalog of architectural box cabinet speakers from episode, uh, you are first in our designs for everything. Uh, we are dedicated to the CDA channel, the professional install marketplace, um, and we listen to you. Uh, you probably have participated in some of our uh, net promoter score questionnaires throughout the year, which we really appreciate. And we do take that information that's gathered in that uh, to mind. And then for peace of mind, that limited lifetime warranty. Core one series kicking this off in a little more detail. There are three models, two in ceiling and an in wall. Uh, polypropylene woofers and mylar tweeters is the combination in these. They're all two way designs and the MSRPs are anywhere from $140 to $230 a pair. And new for this uh, model series is in the 150 series, we did not offer an eight inch in ceiling. We listened to you, you asked for the eight inch, here you've got an eight inch pair that retails for $230. In the three series, it's our largest lineup, uh, nine in ceiling and two in wall. There are four all weather, four DVCS, dual voice coil surround, one point, point being a speaker that has a 45 degree baffle angle. You can see it visualized here uh, for, um, in ceiling, aiming the sound into a particular area itself. The three series adds pivoting tweeters and we move up to a soft dome tweeter instead of the Mylar. It's a little wider dispersion, uh, lower distortion. And then vacuum form polypropylene woofers versus the uh, stamped polypropylene woofers that we use in the one series. Costs a little more, but it's a little better clarity and tighter base in there. MSRPs jump up from 260 a pair to 370 a pair. And here you can see an expansion of the all weather, which is AWIC, all weather 
in ceiling is what that indication is. And again, listening to the dealers, uh, you asked for an eight inch in ceiling outdoor or uh, wet environment uh, type of speaker. And voila, you ask, we, we, we deliver. And uh, also adding an LCR in wall to the mix for the uh, three series. Polypropylene woofers again, pivoting fabric dome tweeter, and then the all weather protection added into the three in many of the models in the three series. In the five series, the top end, nine models, seven in ceiling and two in wall, two all weather, three DVCS, one point and one LCR. Pivoting Teteron dome tweeters, so stepping up again one step each time in both the woofer materials and the tweeter materials. Teteron is a man-made uh, fabric that uh, mimics, I guess is a, a way of putting it, uh, silk, uh, but it's a much more detailed in production, much more consistent uh, in being able to produce that type of material versus the expense of going into actual silk. So better clarity at higher volumes holds up to that power drive and then moving to an injected molded graphite polypropylene woofers uh, for better power handling and tighter base. And in the five series, we go from 360 a pair all the way to 460 a pair. In addition, at the five series level, you get a tweeter adjustment switch. You can do plus or minus, well, plus zero flat or minus uh, 3dB into the tweeter. So again, a little more fine tuning as you get that speaker installed and go, oh, wow, these, this room is very bright. Let me calm the highs down a little bit so it's not as bright and uh, uh, potentially fatiguing for your client. High value performance. I talked about that at the very beginning, <clears throat> but it's, it's really making that balance between the two uh, because we do we are cognizant that the uh, uh, competitions out there and they want our share. So we have to target particular price points and build the best possible speaker we can for that price point. Um, and so delivering great sounding speakers, the team that we have had over 50 years of acoustic research uh, in their development. Uh, we do have a dedicated team, as you saw at the front end, F Alex and myself are here in the Triad factory. All we do all day is think about audio. We have a little fun, you know, watching some home theater demos and, and such, but uh, that is where we are devoted to day in and day out. All of our products are our unique designs. So you won't see this same design under another manufacturer's name or style itself. Uh, and from a QA standpoint, <clears throat> we have the toughest quality standards that I've seen uh, in all my years of being in this industry. Every speaker that is produced, uh, the factory must test it and it must be within plus or minus 1.5 dB of the specified curve or that speaker is rejected and we move on to the next one down the line. And we keep the profitability for you. On average, you're able to achieve 65 points uh, with little to minimal issues in there. We do not offer, or you have no internet presence to compete against. So we're not on Amazon, we're not on Crutchfield. You won't find us there. Uh, this is really a line that's built for you. And also we have a unilateral pricing policy to help protect you even further at UPP. Talking about the expanded offerings, <clears throat> the all weather or the AW that you see in the model numbers, um, some of the keys, and, and, and again, these speakers are designed to as pictured there, go into the wet environment, uh, the bathroom, pool room, outdoor under the deck. Uh, we incorporate items to help keep, minimize the rusting that potentially occurs with steel. So we've gone with stainless steel hardware, as you can see in the close-up picture of the screw, zinc plated powder coated grills to uh, add some longevity to those because they are steel grills that get magnetized onto the front. And then uh, the new AWs, we've added a protective magnet cover, a ferrite magnet, very, very porous. And so it is usually one of the first things that will begin to rust in a uh, speaker like this. So minimizing that opportunity by enclosing that motor structure back behind. And then you can see the crossover network and 
uh, high quality push pin. So it really does a good grip on the uh, speaker wires. DVCS I touched on, dual voice coil surround. We call it a hybrid. And what we've done is on that dual voice coil and the tweeters, there's two tweeters in it and they're slightly separated and angled in different directions for each other. On the crossover network, you see two sets of inputs in a dual voice coil mode or a single point stereo. You're able to connect left channel and right channel, left channel, right channel to the terminals themselves, and you'll get stereo sound out of that single speaker. Great for use in bathrooms, great for use uh, in hallways um, where you don't need or want to put you know, two, two speakers in separation. Instead of going to a mono, which usually tends to give you a little muffled sound, when you switch to mono versus stereo, you keep that brightness that uh, stereo does deliver. On the other hand, this is a great, becomes a great speaker to be used as surround sound or height channels for Atmos applications. You can run that height channel into input one, flip the switch to surround, and now this becomes a single speaker with a, a, a bipole speaker. So both tweeters are firing in phase. Uh, so it gives a greater dispersion, a greater oh, sense of openness, not as, oh, I know exactly where that sound's coming from. No, it gives you that, that, that diffused kind of impression, which is what you're looking for uh, for height channels or surround channels. Transition overview, another eye chart, and again, Gary will supply this type of data, but here is what you've been purchasing over the years, uh, the 150, 350, and 550 series. And then directly across is replaced by, and or if it's a new model, and then if we did not replace a particular model, so all of these in-ceiling surrounds, they all became DVCSs. So those are right up in here and shown as a comparison. And then the ones that are no direct replacements, we do have episode and or other partners uh, options to be able to go to. And then again, MSRP reductions, just highlighting of where you were before and where you are now today. Uh, marketing support and assets, um, <clears throat> cut sheets, you're familiar with these. Each of these series has a dedicated cut sheet with specifications and some key pieces. Great for putting into your project books. Installation manual, <clears throat> excuse me. Installation manual available, again, just for oh, a refresh on, you know, how do, how do I set this? And more particularly for the new line is that DVCS and how to utilize. Downloadable from the portal is the large poster you can see triad version behind my shoulder here, uh, but showing every single SKU in the episode architectural line, uh, including the core, the new impression series, and signature. Um, performance levels with a reminder of what uh, uh, materials are being used, references to the grills, the enclosures, uh, and then overall dimensions. So it's a quick cheat sheet. Um, recommend downloading, printing, and keeping it close up on your wall in the back rooms. Mechanical drawings have been added for all of the new core series. So any details, uh, dimensions that you're looking for, uh, you can find as like even all the way down to the thickness of the front baffle uh, with and without grill measurements, the depths, uh, and you also get to see what that speaker looks like in detail. And you can blow these things up uh, when you download. Compatibility tables. Again, quick uh, cheat sheets for grill compatibility and bracket compatibility. So these are also in the support tab. Intro video, uh, of course, goes along with it. Social media campaigns have already been kicked off for both of these products that we're talking about today. Detailed product pages, what's new page again, promoting it, dealer emails to you to get you excited about uh, uh, making trial. There is employee accommodation and model home demo pricing available for you. So again, kind of wrapping up, circling back to where we started. Why choose this new episode core line? 
sound based on science. Uh, again, rest assured, these sound awesome, uh, especially if you've been using the 150, 350, 550, they are even better sounding than what that particular lineup is. Comprehensive lineup, as you've seen, just about every situation that you will get into, there's a solution for that. And then that balance between performance and price, uh, very, very critical. And then the expanded offerings that we talked about. Oh, I do have one thing before we go. Earlier this year, we made a running change. Uh, if, you're, if you've been using our landscape episode series speakers, um, oh, I guess it was about a year ago, we started getting complaints from you guys and gals. Uh, there was a plastic uh, threaded piece incorporated onto the stem that gets mounted either on the stake or the uh, surface mount. Uh, you were complaining they were breaking easily. Uh, so we made a change that is now a brass insert and that impacts the, the four and the six inch. Uh, the eight inch already was there because it again, it was a very, the eight as you've seen is a very large heavy speaker. At the same time, we had an opportunity. We looked at the six inch woofer on the LS SAT six and found that it'll, it'll handle uh, greater power than what we were actually originally designed for. So we have changed the uh, 70 volt tap on there and added a 60 watt option, uh, very similar to the eight inch. So now it can go to 11 uh, with that extra 60 watt, giving you basically a, a double the output from the previous tapped out at 30 watts. Uh, so it's a little louder. Uh, both changes are now current on all the products that you buy. For that tap setting, just look for the dash two. That's just the uh, indication that it's a new version. With that, I'm gonna turn this over to Alex and uh, I'll be back for Q and A at the end. Thanks so much, Matt. I'll just I'll just chime in here. I love uh, that it's actually going to 11. I mean, is that a little spinal tap, you know, reference there? I mean, it's one louder. Way to go. It's love just, it. It's just one louder, exactly. <laughs> hey, um, all right. So be before we, we transition, uh, Matt, just want you to be privy of some of the questions. Chad asked a couple questions. Um, looking for, you know, third party objective uh, review data. Sometimes on these shows, even, you know, uh, we'll get name brand comparison. What, do you have anything like that that you feel comfortable offering up? We saw the comparison chart. So, Chad, yes, I'm going to get the core transition sheet out to you guys uh, on Friday morning. Uh, but yeah, it, anytime we could go deeper with branding is, is great. I don't know if you steer away from that or what are your thoughts on the current competition out there? Speakers are such a subjective, and, and that's where I always uh, recommend, uh, yeah, because the origin sound, origin does have its sound, episode has its sound, uh, speakercraft yeah. has its sound, triad has its sound, um, and it's so subjective. Uh, yes, we could do the side-by-side -side comparisons of what's the frequency response, what's the sensitivity and such, but is that really going to tell you what that speaker sounds like? No. I really ask that everybody, if there's interest in a particular style, buy one. You know, mm -hmm. there's there, there's uh, capabilities of getting them to you at inexpensive pricing to audition them against who your favorites are. But the core line is definitely targeted at uh, origin, speakercraft, proficient. Um, yeah. The key the key players out there in this entry level kind of introduction into architectural speakers. Yeah, you know, as Chad is pointing out, you know, and sometimes this happens, it's it's what is the push over the edge with a customer when it comes to name branding? And, and I always want to try to give all of our dealers, you know, as much ammunition as I can, obviously for us internally, the margins, uh, you know, the, the, the build quality, everything that we feel so comfortable about it, you know, leads us to recommend that speaker in the first place. Yeah. So, you know, we don't have to go down that route, but Anywhere we have a, a tagline, hey, if you're using whatever, you know, JB, what, I don't mind putting that into this forum because our guys can take that and go right to the job. This is a, you know, an enclosed scenario. So feel free, you know, what's in our shelves as well. And, and, and that is primarily why we're, you know, with the, with the Snap Pro stores, these guys got a, a ton of competition right in the shelves. Uh, so yeah, but it does fit nicely. It's a niche, it's a launch. We're all totally behind it. And thank you so much for your hard work. Um, we, let's get- we are yeah. definitely we are definitely aware of uh, 
the need for additional branding involved here. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of a lot of what we do is we put that emphasis towards the dealer to uh, deliver that brand messaging. Uh, I have been challenged. I again coming over from the triad side with the acquisition of Control Four and Package and Triad. Um, one thing that, that became very evident to me is I, I hear that about needing additional branding and nobody knows about the brand. Keep in mind that episode is now nearly a 16, 17 year old brand in the marketplace. Uh, so there is some depth and, and you'd be amazed at the hundreds of yeah. hundreds of thousands of speakers that have gotten out there. So, so there is an impression in there, but we really need the dealer's support in regards to uh, raising that up even higher. You're right. And, and, and going down that path, we're going to support that choice, Chad. Um, look at it from my, I mean, I'm in marketing. So yeah, I, I love bringing on a new idea or a new package, anything I can to enhance the awareness. Um, sure. You guys have the tough job when it comes to street level, you know, yeah, homeowner. I have no idea what this is. It's not JBL or whatever it is, but no, look at episode, look at the growth internally at our stores. Look at the awareness, look at the, the branding that we've already uh, wholeheartedly embraced and succeeded with. Uh, so I, I love it. I having a great, great run, if you will. And you keep coming out with new stuff. It's, it's fantastic for us. So let's go down that. Okay. Jason, really quick. Uh, so a couple uh, real quick, Matt, uh, on the IW speakers, uh, three dash five, uh, are the tweeters pivoting? Can you answer yes. that for us really quick on the, on which ones on the, on the IW speakers, uh, three and five, uh, starting at the three. Yes. Pivoting tweeters on all the in walls. Uh, where we lose the uh, uh, pivoting on the three and five is the dual voice coil surround. Those are fixed position. Uh, Matt, can you give me any, if you were, aren't already, going to give me the polar plots and frequently, frequency response graphs for me to send out, or if you have them? I do not have those at the present time. Uh, we're awaiting the factory to give us final findings on those. Okay, got it. Uh, new speakers have eight ohm impedance from Lloyd. Yes. Eight ohm and uh, roughly six ohm minimum. So a little, a little easier on your amplifiers that you're, you're, you're tagging with these. They'll be a little, and I say, I hate to use the word inefficient, but they will be a little less efficient than what the 150, 350, but we've been able to compensate a lot for that in the uh, design of the driver materials and the drivers themselves. Got it. Uh, Richard, looking for the difference between episode and signature. I hope we answered that already thus far in this presentation. We'll keep that question kind of in there and let's continue to address um, the significance in both of those lines. Uh, Ronnie, uh, episode 5.1 mini AVR will be available in Europe. Uh, Ronnie, I don't know if you are in Europe, but uh, great. Thanks for joining. Uh, Matt, availability? Immediate. Right there now, you go. you've got it and uh, hopefully you've been loaded up in Volutone's warehouse. Got it. Uh, Josh, uh, he's on most of my webinars. Thank you so much, Josh, for the question. Uh, all other speakers uh, handle being installed in shower and or sauna. Yes. Got it. Uh, and Andy, uh, another uh, frequent guest, uh, uh, any plans on invisibles? I don't know, what's the detail on that, invisibles? Visibles being the, uh, I'm going to assume that he's talking about the plaster over uh, type of uh, stealth or amina type of application. Uh, we continue to look at that market. It is a, uh, it fits our needs as being uh, supportive of what many of our dealers are using for that particular application. Uh, they do a great job. Uh, it is still right now a niche in our speaker category. We'll continue to look at it and uh, um, hopefully be able to tell you something in a couple of years. All right. Love it. Love the development. All right. That takes us through that. It's about half an hour to go. Alex, you're, you're up next, buddy. What's going on? How are you? And why don't you give a really quick, uh, uh, your, your job title and so forth. And, uh, how many times you actually win the battles there at the cubicles? I'm sure you, you kick his butt all the time. No, I'm just teasing. But uh, Alex, good to have you on the program. This is a weekly webinar series. You got a, a, a very knowledgeable audience here, well over hundred people. Thank you so much for bringing this to the table and uh, we're interested in your presentation. Great, awesome. Well, I'm Alex Alioskas. I'm the uh, product manager in charge for uh, multi-room audio. So I handle all the uh, amplifier uh, matrix switch kind of uh, projects within the company. Um, and today I'm here to talk about the latest release launched about uh, well, just a few days ago is our new um, small footprint uh, 5.1 mini AVR 
uh, product. Really excited about this, and uh, it's been selling like hotcakes the first uh, the first uh, couple days that it's been out. So it's uh, it's already looking like it's a winner. Um, but you know, kind of a couple reasons why this is an important product to, that in our portfolio and for you guys to have in your tool belt uh, toolkit. Um, it's really a great solution for small spaces. It's got all the, the, the features that you'd expect from a traditional AVR, but in a, in a much smaller footprint. Um, it has all the connectivity that you would expect. So it, it works with, you know, um, as a fully featured AVR and, and has many of the decoding and, and uh, features for video resolution that you're looking for. Um, we have Oversee on the product, um, which allows you to uh, do a number of things to remotely uh, connect to the product and, and configure it from uh, a distance. Uh, and the, one of the best parts of this is this can be uh, used as a complete standalone product or can be fully integrated with the control system. And I'll, I'll talk about all these little points as I go through it. Um, I will have my camera active and I do have some uh, show and tell as I walk through some of this. So um, I will try to point out as much as I can on the screen. And if not, I'll have the stuff in hand. So um, the 5.1 mini AVR is coming in at about 649.95 uh, MSRP. Uh, it's a globally available product. Uh, so it can be sold in North America and uh, in Europe and Australia and New Zealand. Um, and really the biggest thing about this product is its, it's size. And, and uh, for those of you that are not viewing on, on uh, that are viewing the presentation, I do have the, the product right here in front of me. So it's a really compact uh, form factor. Um, it's just 10.5 inches by eight and a third by one and three quarter. Um, and it fits essentially where traditional AVRs don't. So you're not normally shoving a full-size AVR behind a TV in a secondary bedroom. Uh, with the 5.1 mini, you can do that. Um, it is also designed to uh, fit right within a, a strong uh, VersaBox. So on the back side, there's a number of different uh, um, mounting holes, and there are actually four that are designated for uh, mounting directly to the back of the Versa plate. So what we would do is you put the Versa plate here, you'd screw in from behind, and of course the Versa plate would pivot, um, and now you have this mounted to your, um, your strong Versa box. Um, it's uh, thin enough that you can mount it behind a TV, uh, and it also includes um, uh, rack mount ears, which, let's see if I can maneuver this. Um, which you can then uh, put it in a 1U uh, rack mount application. Um, to do two of these in a 1U rack, you'd have to use a, um, a shelf, uh, but two of these do fit uh, side by side. Uh, we do have screw, uh, screw on feet um, that allow you to, um, you know, just have this on a, on a tabletop. Um, and it really is a, it's a great, um, great solution for rooms with no pre-wire or or for retrofit projects, um, a really, really cool solution. So um, for connectivity, it's gonna have anything that you would traditionally expect with an AVR. So you've got your three HDMI inputs. Um, you have an HDMI output with uh, audio return, so your ARC. Um, you have a selectable analog or digital input. Um, there's a Bluetooth input and that's what this antenna is for. Uh, so you can stream from your phone or a, um, uh, an Alexa or other personal assistant. Uh, has an LFE output to power subwoofer. Also has an IR input um, to be used um, with external IR products. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the standalone section a little bit later. And of course, an RJ45 uh, connection, uh, which gives you all your networking, your IP control, and the ability to connect through Oversee. Continuing on connectivity, a little bit about speeds and feeds. So from a power standpoint, this is uh, 50 by three on the, uh, the left center and right channels uh, and 25 by two on the left surround and the right surround. Uh, for those of you who have used one of our episode mini amps, um, which is either a uh, comes in a 35 by two or a 35 by three configuration, um, you will know that this is more than enough power uh, to be able to, um, to drive uh, small home theaters in, in secondary rooms. Um, we do support uh, HDR 4K 30, 10-bit and 4K 68-bit, HDCP 2.2, um, 
fully, Dolby Digital DTS, Dolby Pro Logic 2, um, and I should add DTS uh, Neo 6 decoding on board, and of course, uh, Bluetooth capability. Um, some may ask why we did not use, um, you know, a higher available HDR format or uh, HDCP, and it really boils down to cost and the consideration that this is typically, typically going to be used um, more so in a secondary room than a main home theater. So we had to make some compromises for price. Um, regarding installation and support, um, so through a web UI, which you can access either through Overseen or directly hitting the IP address of the uh, product, um, the interface displays all the information that you would need in case you have to call support, MAC address, firmware version, service tag information. Um, when it comes to um, CEC, so this product is fully capable of uh, CEC control directly from a TV using a TV remote control. You can set up how your TV controls this amplifier. So the TV can turn the power on and off of this unit. Uh, it can uh, change the source uh, and also can um, adjust the volume up and down. It's fully configurable inside the UI. Um, couple other things that you can do and you see in the upper right hand corner, um, you can do your firmware updates directly from that or from Oversee. Um, and uh, you could reboot um, uh, reboot the device all from that, uh, that one screen on the AMP in the UI. On some of the secondary screens, all the things that you would need to configure an AVR, your speaker size, whether it's large or small, will consider and determine what, uh, what frequency range gets sent to those speakers. Um, you can put crossovers on each channel. Um, you can adjust the frequency and the slope. And then of course, very important, individual speaker level. So you can balance the surround sound system in the room. And then time alignment, which, uh, which is basically a measurement of where, you, where the speaker is um, from where you're listening. That measurement will adjust for and do time alignment, um, just like uh, every AVR. Input and output configurations. Um, so you've got some flexibility here. Um, you can have it default to turn on to a certain input if you'd like. Uh, you can default it to turn on to a certain volume. Um, you can change and relabel inputs. So HDMI 1 might be your Roku in, uh, HDMI 2, 2 might be Apple TV. Um, and then you can select the default sound mode uh, when that product, uh, when that input is in, in play. So um, if the uh, it, it, if the um, aux or optical input um, is you know just from a phone that gets plugged into it, uh, you can select that as two channel stereo. Uh, if there's another source that's only analog, but it's like a you know an older DVD player, you can uh, you can select it to turn on Adobe Pro Logic Two. And of course, if it's fed with a Bitstream from Adobe Digital and DTS, it will automatically configure and control that. Um, talked a little bit about Oversee. Um, for those of you that are using Oversee, um, you're seeing more and more of our products come into this architecture and it's uh, Oversee is going beyond just uh, configuring outlets and, and, uh, and setting up network routers like it used to be. Uh, it's a very, very uh, becoming more and more integrated and more and more products are able to work together uh, using Oversee. Um, but with this implementation, um, it gives you remote reboots, remote firmware updates, and remote amplifier configuration. All of those screens that I just showed you are available through Oversee that can be done and, and connected and configured from the comfort of your desk um, uh, in your office uh, or, or, or wherever you may be um, uh, when you need to troubleshoot or configure from a remote location. The really cool part of this product is it can work completely standalone, meaning you can have a regular TV using the TV remote control and have your Roku, your Apple TV, and maybe a PS4 directed in adult, uh, connected directly into HDMI inputs. And then one connection, the audio return channel, goes to the, uh, the mini amp itself. And then your remote control controls everything. And this is your remote that came with the TV. Nothing special needed. Um, if you wanted to go to IR control, yeah, you can do it through traditional um, IR uh, connection block. Or what's really nice about this product is it has a direct IR input. And if you flip the switch to on, it will actually power the IR receiver. So you don't need to have a connection block. 
And of course, the third level of integration, which is I think what most people are going to be using, is IP control. So at launch, we've got a control four driver with SDDP. It's available now. Um, we have an IP control API, so you can uh, download that and program a third party IR remote if you wanted to. Uh, we have an IR control API available. Um, so if you're into writing drivers uh, for devices that we may not support, um, that's available for you to, to use. Um, and we will have Crestron, RTI, Elan, and URC, uh, URC drivers. Right now they're scheduled uh, for uh, July. They're lagging a little bit behind. Um, but right now, um, yeah, we are fully compatible with Control 4, uh, with, uh, with IR, and then with third-party devices with, uh, uh, with IP control. So just a quick recap of, of the 5.1A mini solution. Um, it's great for small spaces. It's got all the features of a traditional AVR at a fraction of the price um, and size of many. Um, connectivity, it works um, as a fully featured AVR with 4K, HDR, and all things you'd expect. Um, Oversee really makes this a, a great product for remote um, access, troubleshooting, and configuration. Um, and the product is very versatile. I'm using one right now in my RV uh, with the RV TV and the remote that came with that TV um, to run my uh, Roku um, without the need of a control system or any third party uh, devices. Or of course, you can go all the way to full third party or um, control for integration using IP. So it's really a great Swiss Army knife product. Uh, and we know how hard it is to get AVRs these days. So um, uh, we, we have sold through our MP1 quantity. We have, uh, I think we have a few more units coming in in the next weeks and we'll be airing some more in. But uh, I hope this is a, a great product that you guys are going to enjoy. Um, and it's going to be a great uh, product for you to have in your uh, toolkit. And that wraps it up for me. Yeah, no question. Uh, availability is on everybody's minds, man. I mean, you, you releasing this product, I don't know if, if that was actually a master plan. How could that have ever been a plan? But yeah, I, I, I can imagine, uh, you know, one of the things about the pandemic that has uh, proven true is that trying different things has really been an option, you know, when something is available. Yep. Um, so not only were we looking forward to this release, but um, this is the time to truly dive into it. Uh, come on, it's user friendly. It's easy. This is a perfect time to dive into some of the technology that you guys have developed and try it out. Um, and it's going to work. Um, you know what? We've got some questions. Um, Alex, let's let's try to hit some of these. Can sure. you do you have access to the questions? Do you see them? Um, I don't, but they're over here. OK, um, we talked about Europe a couple minutes ago. Uh, Dan Stevens is asking yet to see the mini AVR in the UK. Uh, when will we see that? Did that ship uh, globally? So uh, MP1 shipment probably did not make it to Europe. Um, we've, we've set up all the pricing now. Um, so I don't have any definitive date when we'll get it there. We're, we're out of stock everywhere. I mean, we sold through our first three months of supply in seven days. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're trying to get more in. So stay tuned. Um, okay. I'll, I'll help you get some updates on when we can get more, both domestically and internationally. internationally. Thanks for that. Um, Aaron, uh, uh, EARC coming out in the, new in the near future. Yeah, so um, again, a lot of decisions on this product were kind of made to, to be sensitive to a price point, but I, I think there's, I think, you know, things like um, EARC, things like uh, auto turn on from, you know, 12 volt trigger, um, I've already received a number of pieces of feedback, and I think that would be great for either a Gen 2 product or a, you know, kind of a, a 5.1 mini, you know, um, upper level model. Um, uh, but definitely looking at trends like that, and, and we're very cognizant of that. We want to make sure that we equip you guys with um, all the latest and greatest technology, but this is just our first forte um, into this. Got it. You know, another thing, I'd love to hear some questions for anybody or, or testimonials for anybody who did get their hands on the 5.1 in the last week or so. I'd love to uh, get your feedback on that. Uh, Evan was asking, I know we talked about Dolby, but Evan was asking about the possible upgrades to support Atmos. Yeah, so um, right now, not currently supported, but um, it, that's, that's. I mean, we got a we got a top 10 feature list of requests already and, and that Atmos definitely uh, falls into that and uh, potentially doing extended channels or, or even uh, 
Uh, we've even considered doing um, um, an output where you could do wireless uh, wireless surrounds um, um, as well to do full Atmos and, and maybe NC Link speaker. So um, these are great suggestions. Um, unfortunately, we don't have them in this first generation product, but uh, we listen to you guys and uh, you know, if it makes sense, we will we will implement it. Got it. Uh, Joe is asking about the 7.1 connotation here, or is it just designed to be 5.1? It's designed to be 5.1. Yeah. So right now, if it's fed like just with any AVR, if it's a 5.1 AVR, it's going to down mix, right? That's a Dolby requirement. So don't don't be afraid of of throwing something at it. Um, it'll it'll down mix it if it if it can't fully decode it. Got it. Andrew uh, has a question. Okay, so can it be, can it de-embed analog two channel? And what are the requirements for heat dissipation and space clearances such as uh, the Vers VersaBox? Um, so, uh... so de-embedding two channel. For some reason, my brain's not working this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's get back to that one. Uh, give me a few minutes to think about it. If I, if I don't have the answer, we can, I can shoot it out. Maybe. We got to get Andrew a hat for stumping our guest. That's for sure. Andrew, we got to get something for that one. I love it. Love the hot seat. That's what makes it the hot seat. No. Okay. How about the uh, heat dispersion and uh, working with VersaBox? Um, so, you know, they are class D. Um, they do not have any onboard fans, which um, also helps to show that it does have great heat dissipation on its own. We've tested it fully in a VersaBox. Um, with a cover on, which would probably be one of the most extreme situations that you're going to run into where it's completely enclosed um, and, and, and there's no, no thermal issues. Uh, we specifically tested it in that environment to make sure that it was rock solid, knowing that it was going to be an often used, you know, hiding it behind a, you know, a, a, a cabinet or something like that, mounting it to a wall where you might have another surface on top of it. We took all that into consideration. Got it. Uh, Chris, with uh, uh, what is the RMS wattage and at what impedance? I'm not sure if you covered that prior in yeah. the slides, but. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So um, on this particular product, the RM, it's 50 watts RMS, at, but that's at four ohms. Um, the eight ohm rating, just cut that in half. So it uh, um, would be a 25 by three and 12 and a half by two. Um, um, as Matt presented before, uh, the impedance on most speakers are, are rated at eight. Um, but, you know, we know that impedance varies depending on um, frequency. Um, so, uh, and, and I also alluded to the use of, um, of our mini, amp the other mini amplifier products out there, which are rated at two by 35 at four ohms. And they've, they've, been, they've been great second room um, products that work great with sound bars and, and, and kind of core and, and other uh, architectural products that we have in our portfolio. Got it. Uh, Mr. Patsko asks, um, uh, will the 5.1 mini have room correction or maybe in the future? Did you build that type of? Yeah, so it's got a, it's got a fairly powerful DSP in there. Um, we, we will consider doing um, manual e equalization first, but room correction is um, on our overall multi-room audio um, kind of you know, what, you know, as we look down the road, um, automatic room correction is something that we know that we need to do um, and something that we'll consider going forward. Got it. Uh, George asked about the Crestron home driver besides the IR. I don't have the specifics on the third party drivers right now, um, other than the ones that I listed on the screen um, will be available in July. However, that protocol is available online for download now. Um, so if somebody wanted to be ambitious <laughs> and go out and, and, and actually write a driver for a third party, um, that, that is there uh, to be able to do. Uh, this one looks like a question perhaps for Matt. Matt, uh, Jason was asking um, a lot of the MDUs <laughs> with noise abatement rules requiring back boxes on the speakers. Is there an option, uh, uh, an optional to a detachable back box for any of these ceiling models? That is not the for, Niles D57 series. Yeah, not not for the core lineup. There, I would uh, recommend Jason to take a look at the signature lineup, the uh, Sig threes, for example, the entry level in there, and those all have the optional quick clip-on mounting back box to be able to do that uh, 
sound abatement or uh, uh, controlling that back wave coming out of the box itself. Uh, I'm testing some of those uh, inexpensive type of uh, pop-ups that allow you to put a material diversion of a back box up. Uh, I haven't found one that really works real well. If anybody has used any, uh, send them my way, mdiver at control4.com. Uh, be glad to add it to our portfolio because I know that that's becoming more and more important uh, with especially MDUs, but even in uh, regular residential to keep that uh, sound from going to an adjacent room. Got it. Uh, Stephen Manley. Hey, he's asking. Okay, so he wants to know right now, why no mention of the one manufacturer, Savant, when third parties are brought up? They always seem to be left off. Why? I'm not the only one asking. I love, that's a hot seat question. No, there's no, I, there's no intention. Gentlemen, uh, you know, I, I know you consider uh, all of the third party brands, whatever they might be and where they sit within you know, the choices of our dealers. See any feedback on that comment? I think just like with anything else in our product line, if there's enough of um, kind of interest and, and demand, we, we'll do it. Um, you also have, I mean, um, we, we do make thousands of products um, and we do, we do ourselves um, build, you know, tens of thousands of drivers. So um, right now that's the list that we're using. There's no reason why that can't change um, going forward, um, but it's feedback like this that helps to uh, um, push the product team um, into action. <laughs> um, so um, I will see what it takes to to add Savant to the list, uh, either to just this product or to, in general, be more supportive of Savant um, within our entire uh, product portfolio. Yeah, I mean, I, I, absolutely. Thank you for that, uh, Alex. And I, I, there is not an agenda. Absolutely not. Uh, we know what you guys are up against out there and when we absolutely want to support uh, your growth for sure. But thank you, Stephen. That's very candid and I appreciate it. Uh, that takes us through all the questions. Uh, you know, we'll just kind of sum it up here. Um, gentlemen, you're going to get me uh, both of the uh, presentations there on email. I, I, in turn, will get that to every single person who registered, regardless of even if you joined us or not. I think it's really important to get that in your inbox. Uh, we talked about comparisons. There was great charts um, or, you know, obviously we were very uh, open about what the current supply is like and what we're all up against. But mostly the launch of this was uh, great. Uh, I hope it's a rewarding uh, experience for you guys, especially in terms of the sell through initially on this and uh, what the dealers are asking for. It's kind of our first kind of, you know, head-to-head uh, -head conversation, which is always beneficial, like you, you already mentioned, you guys, uh, to get this kind of feedback. And you know what? Hey, can I ask you back in four more hours? What, do you, what are you doing in four hours? You're going to come back here, and we're going to do this all again. Yeah. So with, ev <laughs> with everybody on here, if you only caught half of it, if you want to pass it to your team, make sure they go on to volutone.com or uh, Snap uh, AV and, and go hit our event sections. Register today within the next four hours and get back on this training. We'll, we'll host our twilight version of uh, our discussion on episode, the, the mini 5.1 release, all that. Uh, great presentation. Get your questions ready. Pass it to your team. And uh, we'll be back. It's a day of, right, episode uh, slash uh, the 5.1 mini uh, and core. That's, that's what today is all about. So, uh, guys, any last words? I'll, I'll start with you, Matt. Good to go, Gary. Great right interaction, on. really appreciate the attention uh, and definitely love the challenging questions. So uh, keep them coming. Again, mdiver at control4.com and Alex, I will let you. Yeah, and I, I can't, I can't um, communicate enough. The more that you guys send us emails about what you want, the more likely it's going to get seen and you know you know we, we receive and we receive input from a hundred different sources um some and you know a lot of it's hearsay um but when you guys send us emails directly with thoughts and um how we can make improvements um you know even criticism sure. um it helps us design better products for you guys so please feel free um, it, you know we're all big boys. We can handle both the positive and, and negative feedback. And uh, this is what makes Snap AV so successful is we listen and uh, we do our best to make you successful. Absolutely. And with that, I think I will uh, sum it up with uh, from all of us at the Snap AV Locals. We cannot uh, thank you guys enough for your hard work and your development. Who knows how many hard nights were spent in developing any of this stuff. And uh, 
the, that kind of work I hope is uh, rewarding going forward and uh, allowing you to uh, see new insights on where we're going uh, in the future as well. But from, uh, from all of the Snap AV locals, like I had said earlier, thank you so much. I think it's a unique forum that we get to do this each and every single Wednesday, which means next Wednesday, I've got lighting. Let's talk FX Luminaire. Um, we all went through an internal training throughout the whole uh, Snap AV chain on, on what that product was all about. Awesome stuff, guys. Uh, if you're doing any uh, landscape um, and integration uh, automation, we're going to talk about design. Um, so it's a pretty cool, competent uh, uh, curriculum we put together for the uh, FX Luminaire discussion next week. And then we'll get into Atlona the week after that. So that's going to kind of tie up our, our June. And we're going to take a, a little break uh, for the uh, July 4th. But that's what's happening on our weekly webinar series. Please join me each and every single week. I will make sure that uh, I get the best of the guys on the hot seat and we continue the discussions. We continue to give you great follow-up material for you to pass to your team. I think it's really important. Uh, Anthony Gonzalez, any chance of a two-channel mini amp with ARC? <laughs> yeah, as we, uh, as we work through uh, the, the roadmap, the, the current two-channel, three-channel mini amps are kind of long in the tube. So, yeah. Um, we are definitely looking at improvements to that product line. And our is certainly a consideration. All righty then. Uh, great participation, like I said. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I will see you in four hours. Go try to get some work done in the meantime. And uh, yeah, you know, always the feedback is completely appreciative, except for the show and the host. I don't need any feedback on that. I don't, no, I'm just teasing everybody. Uh, certainly a pleasure. Uh, we'll see you guys in a few hours. Thank you so much from all of us at the Snap AV Locals. That's all Thanks, net, everybody. MRI, Custom Plus, and Volutone. Only here will you get discussions like this each and every week, giving you the best products in the world. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Thank you.